Hi, Matt. I was looking forward to talking to you. I, I really get turned on by like good ideas and good stories. I've been cursed and blessed with an overactive imagination. If uh, people like it or whether they don't like it, no consequence to me. I prefer that they liked it. Even just saying that, that made the um, hairs on my ass. That Matt no. Lee's Gets Creative contains themes and subjects that may not be suitable for everyone listening. If you're easily offended, we suggest that you get your podcast on elsewhere. This time on Matt Lee's Gets Creative. I started playing when I was 11. So right, right from back in the day, I was always just really fixated on the guitar to the point where even now, if people ask me about lyrics, I've got no idea, but right. I love melody. I love melodies. John Elmsley was born the same year as Luke Skywalker. Well, technically 1977. He signed major record contracts and toured the United States and the United Kingdom. He's being featured on no less than two top 40 UK singles. And right now you can see him as the lead guitarist on the Chicago Blues Brothers, Europe's finest Blues Brothers tribute act. He's a phenomenal guitar player who's played in front of crowds all around the world. And he's my guest on Matt Lee's Gets Creative. Follow us at ML Gets Creative. That's for Twitter and Instagram. There's a Facebook group. There's a YouTube channel. Matt Lee's Gets Creative at gmail.com. Please consider leaving a five-star review on iTunes or wherever you're listening to this show. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much for agreeing to do it. No trouble at all. It's my pleasure. Absolutely my pleasure. It's been a while since I've... Um, being asked to speak about anything guitar related so it's it's quite a it's quite a nice change actually oh it's great i mean to get the fanboy side of it for me out of my way uh we saw you play in cardiff uh mm-hmm. and th- and pardon my french but that show was fucking incredible fantastic thank you very much it I, was a good I, night i honestly it's i had so much fun uh and it was on like because i'm a huge blues brothers guy okay and as i told chris when i talked to him when my wife pointed out the blues brothers uh poster my mm. immediate thought was blues brothers tribute act come on man why you, why you gotta do a blue oh. uh, yeah so then we I, th- get- I, I, I know exactly what you mean i know exactly what you mean it's kind of i think with any with anything like you know any bands that you love when there's a tribute it's kind of straight away you, you kind of are oh, personally i'm kind of on the why would you do that yeah. Don't do that, please. Why would you do it? Yeah. But I guess that's probably because we're all starting from an idea that I don't know. Not that people wouldn't take it seriously, maybe, but maybe they come from a place where they don't love it as much as you do. And so maybe they're not going to, you know, treat it with the respect that it deserves or or maybe look at the, the finer details or, and, and stuff like that. But yeah. I, I think generally speaking, uh, you know, the band that Chris has put together – I think everybody's, you know, really into the music, but but kind of respectful for it to it as well. You know, wanting to kind of it's not just a turn up and play kind of thing. I think everybody's kind of invested in 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 trying to make it as as authentic as it can be, whilst obviously recognizing that it, it just can't be. It can't be the Blues Brothers, but I think you know kind of what we do I, I hope it's in the spirit of what they do anyway oh i mean it completely is because i'll be honest i went into it what maybe even a little bit wanting to not like you guys if you know okay. what i mean you know i appreciate your honesty because i'm like oh they're gonna do there's gonna do they're gonna do blues bro oh, this man's gonna come out and play like Macatar murphy rick mm-hmm. yeah right but within like one two and you guys had me uh oh, and fantastic. i was just like this is a great show. Um, oh, good on you! Top to bottom, the band were phenomenal. Uh, yeah, I, I don't right. even. I don't even. When I first went to see them, I would say to people, "I'm going to see a Blues Brothers tribute act." But yeah. now I say, "I'm going to see the Chicago Blues Brothers." Oh, that's that's awesome. Yeah, and I don't consider it a tribute act because it's a it's a rad band. You know, it's unbelievable. Fantastic! Thank you very hey, much. No problem, man. You and and we also really loved that. Y- yes, you are the lead guitarist, but you're also like you were saying about that respect to Matt Guitar Murphy, you're mm. playing a lot of the leads and licks that Matt Guitar Murphy played. You're not going into business for yourself. As oh, they would definitely. Say. No, definitely. I mean, you know, I never, you often kind of find guitarists that are maybe frustrated singers or, you know, 
a kind of not necessarily um, kind of guitar first and foremost, but right right from word go, you know, I started playing when I was 11. So right right from back in the day, I was always just really fixated on the vo- on the guitar to to the to the point where even now, if people ask me about um lyrics i've got no idea but i love melody i love melodies right so a lot of i mean i spent um prior prior to coming back to to this show i'd spent four years in a queen tribute and i was growing up i was a massive queen tribute um a quick massive queen fan Mm -hmm. and it was always really important to me to kind of go if i was a guitarist sat in the audience i'd be expecting those solos to be played there's such a strong melody that yeah. I'd expect I'd expect that that solo to be played as is to me it's as important as a vocal line. Yeah. And the same thing's true with the Blues Brothers. I mean, some of those leads are just so they're so right, they're so perfect for the song. That's right. And uh, and you know I'd be if I was listening to it I'd be I'd be singing the the lead line. So I kind of think you know to do it justice. <coughs> excuse me. That's the part play yeah. that part it's, it's almost a from a <coughs> just from a show point of view it's a no-brainer but from from a, a guitarist point of view it's like they're great lines yeah i want to i want to play those lines anyway you yeah know? yeah and it's like you said that they're they're perfect so the songs they're not going to be the right songs if the if the the licks and the leads aren't aren't the same <laughs> absolutely absolutely and and actually i get um i get a big kick out of you know, trying to replicate those lines because it's not just necessarily about, <coughs> excuse me, I don't know why I'm coughing. Um, it's, it's not just, uh, sorry, my cough's completely um, blown okay. me off my train of thought. Um, yeah. It's not just about learning the lines. It's kind of, you play enough of enough lines by any player uh, and kind of by osmosis, it starts to sound like, you know, you pick up the licks and you pick up the tricks and stuff, but kind of by osmosis, I think you start to, uh, well, I hope you start to sound like that player as in, in terms of your articulation of the lines. Mm-hmm. I think you actually, rather than just, you know, you know, those um, old cylinder music box things where you wrap paper around with holes in and, and turn and mm-hmm. turn the cylinder and it plays the music. Yeah. I, I'm not. Re- I don't want to do it like that. I want it to sound like, you know, whether it's me or somebody else. I want it to sound like it's actually them playing that line, rather than just reproducing the line. Yeah. You, I, I want them to actually t- to really feel it. You know, and obviously sometimes what you're playing is so alien from what what you yourself would naturally do. Then it, it takes a long time to do that. Yeah. But kind of with with the Blues Brothers stuff, I think because it's so ingrained you know those songs are kind of so ingrained that you know although i am consciously playing somebody else's lines it's reached a point where it kind of feels natural for me to play those lines now which is lovely it's lovely yeah and it i mean it's funny you say the whole as a guitar player what you would be expecting because that's Mm -hmm. literally what i was expecting watching (laughs) you guys play cardiff i was like like i said i'm there probably going these guys miss one thing and I'm going to pick up on it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and then within one song, I was, I didn't even think about that anymore. And as I told Chris, I even got up and danced at one point. I don't dance. Oh, good all. on you. That's why I became a musician and joined a band. So I didn't have to dance in the crowd. <laughs> right. So yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It was, it was a phenomenal time. Really cool. Um, you're saying there about tone and matching that sort of thing. When I was mm-hmm. in a blues band in Canada, I had a guitar player whose biggest um, influence was Stevie Ray Vaughan. Okay. Uh, and we would do like pride and joy. Uh, and mm-hmm. it's like you said, he wouldn't just learn the notes because I've played with guitar players that know how to quote unquote play pride and joy, yeah. but it doesn't sound like pride and joy. Yeah. Uh, right. And he could play it note for note. Perfect. With all like the artic- articulation, everything like yeah. you were saying there. And, and it just makes such better. a difference. Yeah. yeah. It makes such a difference to really, you know, to really feel it, really, really play it rather than just reproduce it. He just, you know, it kind of separates, you know, like I said about the music box thing, it's not just about repro- if you're just reproducing the spirit, sorry, if you're just reproducing the notes, kind of put a CD on or, or, you know, do something else. I think the whole point of seeing a live band is that you get a little bit of, you get the kind of the emotion with it and kind of the, you know, sometimes they, 
the um, frustration or or like the aggression or whatever it, it, emotion is kind of within that that piece that lead line or that song or whatever. I think that's what that's people. I think people spot that. Or, you know, maybe, I don't know, as a guitarist, I, I spot that anyway, and I'm, I'm sure as a musician you do as yeah. well. You spot it when people are just doing it by rope, you know, and there's nothing, there's nothing, in, inspiring's not the right word to use, I don't think, but yeah, there's, there's no nothing to it. Exactly, nothing resonates. You don't, don't resonate when you're doing it that way. I think you've really got to feel it. And sometimes, you know, if you're really playing it, you'll miss a note, you'll drop a note or whatever, but, but that's just... That's when somebody's really playing. I yeah. think if somebody's really, really playing, you play, you know, it's on the edge, and sometimes, you know, you're going to hit a bum note or whatever. But that's just the joy of it for me. Yeah, those are also know? they also feel very natural too when those natural little slips happen. Sure, um, yeah. But that, there, there is that tendency for things to sound like a, a karaoke backing track, you know, because yeah, you can get a karaoke yeah. song that it sounds like it's a real band. But it's mm-hmm. like you said, they're just playing the notes. You can almost picture them reading the sheet music as they're doing it. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, there's, Absolutely. No, there's no energy or, or vibe to it. Um, one, no, of, no. one of my favorites on your on the night there was when you guys did uh, Green Onions. Okay, yeah, and, right. And, and Jake and Elwood would kind of leave you guys alone for a minute. Sure. And uh, it was your bass player uh, on, on that evening. I think it was. it might have been his first show. Uh huh. And it kind of seemed like the whole set, you were kind of like, like a playful puppy, like almost nudging him, like being like, "Come on, man, play with me. Like, let's yeah, have fun." Right. Like, because you're pulling faces at him, trying to get him involved, and he was playing really, <laughs> really well. But he was like a stone cold kind of guy. Uh, yeah, right. Well, that's just a challenge. If if somebody's not gonna, you know, if they're not gonna play along, then that's just a challenge. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to be even sillier. But that's, yeah. you know, I really subscribe to, and I and I say this a lot. I massively subscribe to the idea that that we play music. You don't work music. Mm. It's play, it's playing, you know, in in the in the truest childlike kind of sen- sense of it. And and the thing that I love about playing with other people is is getting those reactions from people and and just having those kind of momentary, you know, connections. Mm-hmm. I, I absolutely I love that. I um Prior to coming back into this show, I'd taken about a year off. Um, I just, I just got a bit burnt out. Yeah. Um, and I'd, you know, probably for six months or so, I, I loved having all, you know, my time, and I, and I, I kind of didn't miss, I didn't miss playing or anything like that. But I just, I started to feel a bit twitchy, and I couldn't really kind of place place why that was. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I realised. The thing that I was missing was was nods and winks, you know, when you get in a room and you play with people and, and you're just yeah. making those connections. That's that that's that's you know ninety percent of of kind of why I do it, just for for those little little moments where you think we're proper feeling this the same way, yeah. you know, or kind of you know sometimes you might you know say with this show I might look over my shoulder and there'll be one of the brass boys kind of looking down. It's kind of we're both clocking. There's there's a change coming up, and we're both kind of looking out for each other. Kind of that mutual kind of confirmation. Yeah, yeah. I I, I just love that. I love that. And, and sadly, I've not found any other line of work where I get that kind of no, you know, that kind of feedback, that kind of connection. No, it doesn't exist. I'm I played. No, right. I played last Wednesday in France. Uh, at oh a, wow, good a, on you. A, like an at, a, at an, like an open mic type setting, uh, but obviously right not many people are speaking English. Sure. Uh, and what was wonderful about it was it was kind of a rather than an open mic as in your turn my turn it was more of a jam night okay so there was a gentleman there who didn't speak a word of english but played the harmonica right and he was kind of watching me from the stage and i could tell he was watching my court like my hands and what chords i was on yeah. uh and then so i just kind of like nudged at him like the wink like you say and he uh-huh. came up and played along with me on acoustic oh, guitar fun. with his Fantastic. harmonica. And love we, it. we literally don't speak the same language, but we jammed out to some that. Rolling Stones. Uh, oh, and then when we were amazing. leaving, he said something to me in French, and I was like, thank you, because it was like, a, <laughs> you know, I don't know what he could have said. That was terrible. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, Your flies it, are undone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Um, I, myself, I'm, I'm a singer, songwriter who played guitar because I had to, because I needed a way okay. to get the songs out of me. Uh, so I was a functional guitar player, but I always tried right. to surround myself with much better guitar players. Yeah, right. Because uh, I yeah, started I, think... I started writing on piano, and then that was too hard to take to the park to impress girls. 
Yeah, I don't. I know that well. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. guitar on your back, and you're like, "Oh, um, what songs are you girls into?" Even though you let pretty me, much probably looked into it and learned them the day before. Yeah, let me just play the intro from More Than Words fifteen times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That used to work back in the day. Well, for, for me, it was uh, Edwin McCain. I'll be. Oh, nice. Okay. Which may be a bit, a bit classier. Yeah. Well, which I, I can't sing it anymore because I tried it a while ago, and it was that moment of like, ooh, that one's yeah. going to stay in the past. But uh, <laughs> that was the song for me at the time. Uh, definitely. Oh, good. Good. On, I am. Um, I had um, a girlfriend. Um, I, I mean, I've probably been playing four or five years at the time, and kind of just just started to kind of reach a level of you know, comfort and competency, I guess. Yeah. Um, but she was a crazy big extreme fan. And obviously that, that, you know, a lot of that stuff is kind of, you know, certainly beyond me as a, as a, as a 15, 16 year old guitar player. Um, but I learned all the intros just to impress this girl, yeah. every, every intro of the album. And even still, it's like, I've still got three or four that I can remember just yeah. thinking, you know, if my wife ever divorces me, these might come in useful. Well, yeah, <laughs> as musicians, you and I, where, where's my wife? Uh, you and I have to keep those things in the back pocket, as it were. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it's medleys. Like, instead of having to learn an entire song, I would learn, mm -hmm. like, a lot of choruses, uh, and then I would pick oh. a bunch of them that are in the same key, and then I'll kind of just jump through them and do, like, a medley. Um, that's the way to do it and that as i get lazier i even talk my way through it and make it really blatant and be like you know folks there are no original songs left for example you know this one as the joker you know some people call me the space cowboy be like but then yeah. shaggy used it and then blah 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 and you can fit it into acdc and i'll sing like four or five songs in the same chord structure oh good on you that's great well, that's a good idea well because then people are like dude that was awesome you played like 10 of my favorite songs <laughs> yeah. little do they know i played g and c with an occasional d but sometimes not even and they're like Brilliant. that was really good uh, that's awesome and you know what you know add a capo in there and uh oh. and you can you can be back you know off oh, you go know. every I, song under your hands yeah when my wife used to visit because like, i've known my wife uh 20 years um when she used to come to my gigs when I was young, she used to start buying a capo and keeping it in her purse because I always used to lose my capo. And then, of oh, course, really? my set was cut in like half because I'm like, what do you mean nobody has a capo, man? Yeah, I got right. six songs at most, and without a capo, I got three songs. <laughs> We're in trouble. Uh, I, I remember one of my mentors once, he uh, he was playing at a – he was phenomenal. Paul McLeod was playing at a set. I didn't really know he knew me, but I knew him, uh, and he was ready to go on his break. And he said, oh, M Matt Lees is here. I've heard his songs. Would you come up and do a few songs? And I'm like, holy shit. So then I go oh, up wow. there, and I said to him, hey, uh, I'm happy to play, but do you have a capo? And he lovingly, jokingly said, no, I learned how to play the fucking thing. <laughs> it's touche. Uh, and then he, yeah, go, he, he leaves me outside. He, he's, he leaves me for like 45 minutes, even though he said he'd be 10. And I'm oh, like, wow. Paul, 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 I'm out of songs now, man, because I was still young in music. Now I could probably fill some time. But back then I was yeah, like, right. I got an Oasis cover, I got a John Mayer <laughs> cover, and I got an original, and then we're out of time. <laughs> Yeah, right. I'm going to have to play these real slow unless you hurry up. Yeah, that's right. You know? I'm going to do this chorus again and again. I'll get the crowd <laughs> yeah. to sing the chorus a few times. That's where the old uh, jazz blues exploration comes in comes in handy. Yeah. You know, just any old random nonsense. Oh, yeah, it's jazz. Trust me, it's jazz. Yeah. I, I used to really annoy my band when we used to do uh, Pride and Joy. I used to switch mm -hmm. vocally into um, uh, Sweet Home Chicago. All right. Okay. Which, which at the time I didn't realize are not the same song. So slightly okay. varying in the rhythm and things, right? Because again, I was just a singer and I thought, yeah. these guys are good. I'll just jump into, you know, Sweet Home Chicago. I like that spirit of adventure. Good on you. Yeah, but I'd, I'd get a lot of dirty looks from my drummer being like, <laughs> bro, a heads up. Like, and then we'd play it the next night and they'd be like, you going to do that, that uh, Sweet Home Chicago thing again? And I'd be like, yeah, let's do that. They'd be like, how about you look at me this time? <laughs> which was you know great fun but that's part of the fun isn't it just messing around with each other on stage and of course it is yeah it's 100 percent. you know i think you know one kind of one once you're playing with players of, of a certain level i think that that's the stuff that that makes you want to play with player a over player b you know if, if you know that you know player b might be an absolutely phenomenal musician but it essentially kind of appears to go through the set without really listening to anybody or, or kind of reacting to anybody 
if player A is the guy that's maybe, you know, doesn't have kind of, you know, out of this world chops, but but you just know he's listening to every note and he's kind of making that eye contact, always looking to kind of make that connection. You're always going to go with that guy because, you know, that you can have a better night by doing that. And I think if if you're enjoying yourself on stage, well, it's just like if you sat around playing, you know, in a house. If you're enjoying yourself, it sounds better. Yeah. It just does sound better. So if you're on stage playing with people that you enjoy playing with, and you know you've got that that trust in each other to kind of know that you you, you communicate you're always communicating whilst you're playing. Then I, I don't for me there's nothing there's nothing more fun than that. There's really nothing. I'm too old to play football now, unfortunately. <laughs> but kind of, but you know that kind of um, team kind of kind of teamwork and yeah. that that constant communication and. I trust you to do your job, but I know that if I cock up, then you're going to cover me, you know, and same for you. If it's not happening for you, then maybe I can do something to cover for you. So it's all going to be, I, I love that. I, I absolutely, that that's a hundred percent why well, I said 90% before dinner. So <laughs> let's say, let's say that's 90% of the reason that I do it. 10% is just to get me out of the house. Right. Exactly. <laughs> but it's not, but it is a team. And when you watch the show, you can definitely, see the team it's running like Fantastic. a like a machine isn't it it's, it's yeah right i mean it's it's a really really good band there's some um obviously i um I, I don't know if chris talked to you about kind of how the band um kind of got set up well i know he mentioned um, uh that you were with them originally and then had to step away right, is yeah. that right yeah that's right yeah um and you know we were kind of just just basically getting trying to get the thing together um and and it kind of really good players in the band, but just for whatever reason, it it, it just took longer than than it should have done. I think if anybody who's been honest about it, it, it took longer than it should have done to yeah. kind of come together. Um, and and I needed to, uh, you know, I don't I don't like to talk about money and music in the same breath, but but it's I part of the to, deal, unfortunately. Yeah, I needed to earn some money, you know, yeah. and obviously that's that's kind of when I I kind of walked away. Um, but obviously then you know, um, four, four years later. So, I mean, I'd done kind of depths for him and kind of just stayed in contact, uh, with Chris and, and some of the guys involved. Uh, and then obviously I got an opportunity to come back and it's like, it's lovely walking into a band where, I mean, I don't know if you've done much depth in, but it's lovely to walk into a situation where everybody knows what, what they're doing. Yeah. And you, and you can just come in and kind of, I'm a, massive believer in preparation mm. like you know pre prepare to the nth degree so it's great when you can kind of walk in and just know for at least a couple of gigs i'm just gonna have to take care of my own thing and then yeah. obviously once you've found your feet that's when you start making those connections but it blew me away coming back in just the the standard of musicianship in the band and uh, and not just sort of you know technical musicianship the the musicality as well of people it's a really musical environment and it's a really uh, obviously we've been putting this new motown sh uh, motown mission show together yeah and and it and it's such a uh collaborative um kind of safe space really you know that whole kind of idea that somebody's worst idea might inspire somebody else to have an amazing idea so there's kind of none of that i'm not going to say this because it's going to make me look silly right there's a there's a very free environment where people will chip in suggestions and obviously some stuff don't work but but somebody you know might suggest something that is maybe not necessarily you know is will not play out to work practically but that might inspire something else so there's yeah. that that really lovely collective kind of a creative environment which i mean credit to chris you know he runs the band and that's a um that's an environment that he's created really he's very open to um to suggestions um, yeah. and to you know to what i think in, because we're all pointing in the same direction we all want the show to be as good as it can be and i guess to a to a degree everybody kind of feels like everybody can kind of deliver their 
eight percent or whatever whatever the maths yeah. is you know um everybody can deliver that so it's just a really a really good environment to be playing in i'm yeah. super <laughs> i'm super happy with it to be honest it's really um i coming back onto this show has really kind of rekindled my love for playing guitar good. to be honest that's cool. and, and that's performing really cool. you know as a musician yeah. that's cool to hear um mm -hmm. but that whole thing just speaks to um chris being smart enough to surround himself with phenomenal musicians <laughs> and then just let it work, right? I mean, yeah, I guess yeah. Both him, bo both Jake and Elwood are also really great singers. I, I don't mean it that way, but what I mean is, mm -hmm. he's not uh, like a dictatorial director. He's going, no. I got great musicians around me. Let's let it play. Let's see what happens. Yeah, uh, definitely. I, th I think he's always happy for. Um, he's always happy to kind of just kind of go right. This is your moment. You know, there's none. There's there doesn't seem to be any of that kind of insecurity that that you know i don't know may, maybe you've experienced it but i have experience with some singers where it's kind of like hold on a minute it's when you get people going i'm the front man yeah you know it's like well just be the singer first you kind of don't really get to nobody gets to all right maybe jake and l would do but <laughs> that 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 front man thing is something that's earned rather than kind of predetermined you know i'm the front man well i'll tell you what do an awesome job singing and performing and the crowd will tell you that you're the front man yeah you know what, Chris, Chris and Gareth both kind of. I mean, they they are most definitely front men. You know, there's not there's not an um, an ounce of doubt in my no. mind that that that's earned through performance. You know, most definitely. But they're kind of happy for, to go. Okay, John, do you want to step out and have a little whittle, or you know, just in the keys player, the brass boys. Uh, you know, yeah. Kind of everybody gets their moment, which, which is really lovely. But I think because of that nobody feels the need to kind of showboat be exactly that. Exactly. That was just searching yeah. for the word. Nobody feels the need because you kind of go, I'm not fighting to be appreciated here. I'm not fighting to get the recognition that, that I crave it's, you're going to get it because he's, he's going to kind of share it around, which is, it's yeah. a lovely environment to be in. I mean, I had to learn that the hard way as a musician and a singer at like 18 years old who did a mm -hmm. fairly good job of Edwin McCain and thought he was king of the world already, as some people mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. And I immediately jumped into that, right, it's going to be the Matt Lee's band. You guys stand behind me and play for me. And right. I wish at that early age I would have been open enough to be like, no, 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 you guys teach me. Uh, because It's so difficult, though. Oh, it it's is. so difficult. But once I got to that point and I met, you know, um, phenomenal musicians who ironically enough the only reason the matt lee's band didn't keep going as, as long as i would have liked is for exactly what you said nobody likes to talk about it but people who play music for a living need to earn and yeah. my group wasn't making enough money fast enough for these boys and i didn't begrudge them for that don't get me wrong yeah, it broke sure. my heart i couldn't play with them anymore because they were yeah. unbelievable like i used right, to joke okay. with my friends and say i have no business being in this band but i just <laughs> happened to write a couple of cool tunes and i can sing them pretty well um, yeah, good on you, that. But I, I wrote a, I wrote a song years ago for a, a blues singer named Charity Brown in Ontario, Canada. Uh, mm -hmm. She was in a group in the 70s called Rain, uh, who had a, a couple of hits. Anyway, one day in passing, she asked me uh, if I would write a song for her upcoming album. Wow. And I was thinking, wow. yeah, I'll write you a tune. That sounds great. So I wrote her this like slow, mellow, acoustic uh, blues tune, uh, which I uh -huh. kind of pictured as the old records you hear where the, t the guitar is kind of out of tune and twangy. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh -huh. that's the way I envisioned it. And it was slow. Uh, it was called Maybe I'm Not Leaving, But Baby I'm Leaving You. Love it. So uh, that, play, That's a really cool title. That. That's uh, thank really you. cool. I played it for her and she's like, you know, I love the song, baby, but that's, that's your song. I can't sing that song. And yeah, I was right. like- Sweet, that's cool. I then play it for my band at the time, the the boys. Uh, Jay Walsh is a guitar player, uh, and I played it for him, and he's like, "Dude, I love it, but uh, uh, can we put some balls on it?" And I was yeah, like, right. "What do you mean?" So he taught it to the band. They played it back to me, um, and it was like a rock blues tune, and it gave okay. me, even though it was my song, it gave me goosebumps because I was like, "Damn!" Uh, so it was such an important lesson that because oh, I was lovely. I was willing and I was willing to be like, all right, man, you tell me. It wasn't eighteen year old me going, listen, bro, I wrote the song. We'll yeah, do it how right. I decide we do it. I was open sure. enough to be like, you show me, boys. And uh, yeah, good on you. I'll send you a link for the track, and it's the, yeah, the, please do. I'd the, love to hear it. The thing that it became is just. I couldn't have imagined it, but um, by the end of being in that band, I used to just turn my guitar off and just strum okay. the chords and just sing because I was like, I don't need the Jay Walsh can do like two of me 
on one guitar. <laughs> he doesn't need me to do this to, to just strum the C along when we're playing Johnny yeah. B. Good. He doesn't need me to hit that C for him on the one, you know? He's going to be just fine. He knows where the one is. Everything, Everybody relax. He knows where the right? one is. If they need me to show him where the one is, we got problems. <laughs> yeah. Hey, folks. Thanks for listening to Matt Lee's Gets Creative. Now, I know people can't afford to be a patron for each of the podcasts that they love. But if you're looking to put a little support towards an independent podcast, it would make you a loyal part of our team. Those fees would be used for the obvious things like the production of the episodes, but we're also looking to pay it forward as each month I'll donate half of the total patron subscriptions to the Valindra Cancer Center in Cardiff. Because in addition to being a musician and a podcaster, I am also a cancer survivor. As well as bonus clips and outtakes from various interviews, patrons would also have access to live streams and at least one exclusive episode per month. Bonus episodes could be additional interviews or unheard guests, as well as performances and readings by musicians, poets, authors, etc. Loyal supporters would also get some digital ear love with shoutouts on these special shows. As a member of the club, you'll also have spoiler alert access, where you'll find out about an upcoming guest, have the chance to submit questions, and even have early access to some of those episodes. This show will always remain free for all of the people that are kind enough to listen and to join us on our journey. But if you're looking to give a little back and help us out too, you are most welcome, and we would appreciate your support. And that's at patron.podbean.com slash Matt Lees Gets Creative. Patron.podbean.com slash Matt Lees Gets Creative. Thanks for listening. I think, though, you know, kind of what you're saying about, you know, you know, the Matt Lee's band, everybody stand behind me kind of thing. Yeah. I think that, you know, or, I mean, I'm, I don't want to talk in general, generalities. So just from my personal experience, you know, I think that there's, if, you know, if you're just going to play at home, play in your bedroom, play for fun or whatever, with no ambition for performing, then that that's a separate thing. But I think in my case, I think that, I, I was always the performing element of it was was kind of really born out of insecurity, really, mm -hmm. because you you're looking for that validation on a a larger scale than just your mum going, "Who are you, good or yeah. or you know your, yeah. your granny or whatever." Yep. So it's born it's born from insecurity, um, and and I think a lot of the stuff that that we take as um, arrogance or people kind of just generally being you know, having an attitude that's bigger than their ability. I think I think probably a high percentage of the time, really that that's kind of insecurity and people kind of feeling the need to front it out, you know, fake it till you make it basically. Yep. You know, and I think it's only as you maybe get older or, you know, have um in my case certain experiences, you you kind of realise that you're not gonna get that validation from from kind of going right i stand at the front now you know this this is kind of my moment this these people are going to love me you, you're not going to get that validation in that way it needs to be you know you, you're going to get that off stage basically you know the real the genuine kind of stuff yeah. that, that kind of gets you over whatever neurosis you might have that 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 kind of comes off stage so you might as well be on stage kind of going wow you you're you're a a genuinely educated musician i know i could learn a lot from you or you know your um say like the the current bass player i don't know if it's um who you saw a guy called luke i think he's only he, he might have not been on cardiff actually mm -hmm. um but luke's actually um he's he's a great really 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 good musical bass player but he's he's kind of a pianist originally so right. just just the way that he hears music and kind of um you know the lines that that he has the freedom to play because he's maybe got a broader view of the music than maybe mm -hmm. he would have had had he just simply been a bass player it's like oh wow you know i'm i'm kind of i just do i need to play guitar now or can i just stop and listen to you yeah and and, and the whole band kind of seems to be you know, I, I kind of look around and as we're playing and just think, I, I love what, I don't know if you could um, 
hear when you're so is in Cardiff. I do a lot of shouting on stage, a lot of yeah. kind of um, whooping and, you yeah. know, just uh, because it's like, that's incredible. And I want to tell you that's incredible. You know, I don't, or maybe I don't want to deny myself that outburst of, yeah. of telling somebody that, that I really enjoyed what they did, you know, and, and it's kind of, that's, there's so many good players in the band. That you just kind of look around stage and go like, wow, all right, I'm going to sit back and enjoy this one. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> you, it, know? It, it, you feel that way in the crowd too. I mean, there are a few instances where after a song I would just shout, yeah. Oh, good on you. Cause that's all I could just like, that's the only thing I could fathom to get out. And it's from me and the buddies in our bands that used to yell that to each other at like yeah. open mic nights and stuff. You'd hear the other musicians go, Yeah. And after a yeah. song, and you think, because that's the validation that you want. Like you were saying, Absolutely. your mom or your girlfriend is going to go, oh, weren't you good, honey? Uh-huh. But when another musician goes, that was really cool, then you're like, yeah. oh, that's that little that little drug, that little high you get for a second. Of course it is, yeah. And that's the I one mean, that we're all addicted to, I think. Even you, even just saying that, that rip made the um, hairs on my arm stand up. You're absolutely right. Yeah. It is, it's like, it's pay it, it's... Um, I swear that it's peer appreciation, really, and you know, yeah. and particularly if you know if, if you think highly of of another musician, yeah, and they and they go like, I like what you did as well. Wow, that's like, yeah. I mean, that's that moment I mentioned with with you know Paul McLeod that time. I didn't even know who mm-hmm. knew who I was. Um, yeah, but when right. he said that, I still remember that exact moment of being like, you know, you know who I am. That's crazy. Uh, yeah. And he's just you know, so that was that was giving me that boost of confidence to then go, all right, I'm going to take this more seriously and I'm going to actually work at this. Yeah, uh, good on you. And then I traveled around all the open mics and kind of treated them like a college degree, if I'm honest. You know? Sure, yeah. Just learned from as many different styles as I could. Mm-hmm. Uh, made a lot of boo-boos, embarrassed myself a few times, but that's kind of how you get those those bruises or those calluses that you need. Absolutely, yeah. And I think, you know, if you're going to embarrass yourself, what better place to do it than on stage? Yeah. You know, I think, you know, it's all... It's all performance really you know even kind of even if you're not consciously performing just that it's not something that that um i kind of started with but just that kind of freedom of knowing once you get up on stage you can basically do anything real you know as long as you're not offensive or or depending on what band you are then sometimes you're offensive yeah yeah absolutely go ahead be offensive but that kind of thing where you know you can fall over. It doesn't really matter, you know, because people are going to take it within the context of a show. So they might laugh about the mistake that you made. They might laugh about you falling over, but you know, you've got another beat that follows immediately after that. And another one after that, and another one after that. And every single one of those is an opportunity to do something that's great. That kind of eclipses the mistake that you made before, you know? Yeah. And it's, it's once you're once you have that confidence, you know, to to not be afraid to make those mistakes, you you do sure. open up a lot more, and you, your performance becomes inevitably so much better. I mean, I'm saying this as a guitarist. I've not kind of never found myself in a position where, you know, I, you know, certainly not the singer in the band where you kind of, you know, I think we are. I certainly know sometimes as a guitar player, it might be me that cocks up, but, the, you know, the sing, ultimately the punters are kind of going, nah, I'm not sure what that singer just did yeah. then. I'm, I'm not sure if yeah. that's right. I mean, it's it's going to sound like one of those things where you're like, when I was a boy, or I wish I knew when I was young, I honestly yeah. wish, the only thing I wish is that I had more fun when I used to play on stage, because mm-hmm. I used to stress out so much about it, and now when I yeah, listen right. back, I would kill to be in a band like the boys I was with in Canada, but obviously sure. at the time I was like, didn't. it's not that I didn't appreciate it. But now that I'm older and wiser, um, mm-hmm. like the other uh, August 31st, I played a gig for charity here in South Wales. I played for okay. about two and a half hours on my own solo. Wow. Um, and it was one of the most fun I've ever had doing a set ever. You must have been exhausted after that. Yeah, my ha- I had the I had the claw hands the next day too. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I had so much fun and I was just up there thinking like, I wish I would appreciated it like this back then because back yeah. then I was in such a rad band. But... I now get to the point where if I forget words, I used to like panic and you go like a uh, deer in the headlights, mm-hmm, but now mm-hmm. I'll just call myself on it and I'll have fun. And I'll be like, Whoa, I didn't know what that line was, you yeah, know, and right. just talk it through it. And a famous one for me is teenage dirtbag. Uh, okay. I always forget what key it's in. All and, right. And I always start in the wrong key. So then inevitably I'll be like her name, her. Uh, and I used to, <laughs> I used to just force my way through it and sing it in the wrong key. Yeah, right. And that's terrible. So now I'll just be like, you know what, folks? 
I, I'm, I did in the wrong key. It actually, it's done in E. It starts down but, here. But there you don't go. you find that people respond really positively to, to yes. kind of you being honest like that yeah. and, yeah. and kind of going, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm a human doing human things, you know, yeah. I, I think, you know, people, once you get on stage, 99% of people want you to do well. And they're kind of on your team, really. Okay, so there'll be people that are coming in, um, maybe reluctant to or, or wary of what you're about to do. But I think, you know, the vast majority of the times, people want you to do well. Yeah. And actually sh- showing that you've made a mistake or kind of having the, the confidence to kind of go, sorry, everybody, just a second. I really don't know where my head's at. Yeah. I think, I think people respond really positively to that. I find they generally do. Yeah. I don't know where it kind of comes from this. I don't know if it's a a school thing or, or what it is, this idea that, you know, performance should be, you know, ice kind of like, um, perfect no imperfections or anything like that it's just a a perfect recital i, I don't know where i don't know where the, that kind of comes from or whether it's a hangover from classical music performances or i don't know it seems so outdated to me when so much of kind of the world now is is kind of all about people um you know kind of reacting to each other and and um do you, do you know what I mean? Just mm-hmm. kind of the yeah. flow, the flow between yeah. people, and I, and and that for me is exactly this. I mean, I'll go back to Chris again. You know, there be there would be performers who go. I mean, not that the show has a script, but I'm sure that there are some shows with like, you know, and that's not to say that he don't work on some jokes. You know, credit where it's sure, due, yeah, but yeah. but obviously he has freed. And kind of, there will be some people who go, right, this is a script for tonight's show and I'm going to do it. And somebody halfway through one line in the crowd shouts something funny. But this person's going to ignore them. He's yeah. just going to carry on yep. with their script. Whereas Chris is always like, yeah, I've done my work and this is the line. But then if somebody contributes something from the show, he'll go with it. Yeah. And and I, and I think that's, that's part of kind of what create. hopefully it creates a, a warm and kind of inclusive atmosphere you know, at, at, at the shows, um, just that idea that, all right, there's a, there's a stage and, you know, there's a division by the fact that there's physically a stage and, you're, and there are physically seats or there's an auditorium where you're standing. But, you know, we want to do well. The yeah. people that see the people that see it want us to do well. And, that, and kind of within that, there's license for us to have some fun with it. Yeah, I you mean, know, and, I, I, and kind of put some humanity into it. Yeah, because I mean, at the gig that I played, I got to the end of my quote unquote set list, and mm-hmm. I just said to the crowd, I was like, you know, what do you want to do? You guys want to put the stereo on? We can just have some drinks. You want me to play some more? And the overwhelming atmosphere was, yeah, just keep playing. And I was like, all right, oh, well, good on you. I was like, I'm outside of where I rehearsed now, so now we're in no man's land, but we're all <laughs> friends here, right? So then it was just kind of like, I'm gonna wing it. I may not know all of it. I ended up yeah. doing a, a, a medley of rap songs for one of my friends that was there. Awesome. Uh, in the middle of which I did have to stop and yell, hey, Fitzy, what's the first line to nothing but a G thing? To which he yelled it back to me. That's the one. Uh, right, such a, brilliant. Such a great night and so much fun, which is, Fantastic. if I, I know, you, I know uh, envy is one of the sins, isn't it? But I am envious mm-hmm. of that band that I watch because it's like, not only are they great, they are having so much fun up there, sure, which is yeah. just a, a great thing to see. And, and Chris said something to me about it that kind of, even though I knew it, he kind of opened my eyes to it, which is the Blues Brothers in themselves were a cover band. Absolutely, yeah. So you can Absolutely. go anywhere. And when he said that, I was like, of course they're a cover band. But I always yeah. think of it as the Blues Brothers with the soundtrack and the so-and-so. But he's right. And of course, That yeah. means that, you know, any nothing is out of line because even modern day songs with something cheesy in a medley, you could see Jake and Elwood doing that. And incorporating that. Yeah. So you guys, while you stick to the 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 the, the, the classics, as it were, you do mm-hmm. have that open realm to kind of go off in some things. And I imagine the Motown mission shows exactly that. Oh yeah, I mean it's it's been it's been brilliant to kind of bring in some, you know, it's it's a fresh feel, you know, kind of from kind of looking at as the show's kind of been put together. It's kind of, I mean, I've always kind of. I've always enjoyed the Blues Brothers. I've always enjoyed Motown music. But it's only kind of when you start to kind of see them in a set list back to back 
and you kind of realize that there's quite a field there's a field difference just kind of the groove on it is different between the motor and the blues brothers stuff and kind of you think well is this gonna you know is this is it going to be too jarring but actually i think just as you say that that freedom that the the blues brothers had the blues brothers band had to kind of just pursue whatever you know whatever thing they wanted to get across yeah you kind of you do have that freedom to do it i mean on i don't i don't even know which tour uh, they did it on i was it was a couple of shows that i decked and they did um coming to america uh by james brown right and what a kick to play that you know it's like uh, you know i just just really enjoyed kind of playing it and it's been the same with this Motown stuff you go Wow, I really enjoy. In fact, actually, in the Cardiff shows, we did um, going down, and what was the other one? There were kind of two kind of rocky guitar songs mm-hmm. in the middle of the set. Which I mean, I don't know kind of where they were, you know, who brought them into the show because obviously that the that tour had been running for a good year, fourteen months before I came back onto it. So I don't know who brought those songs into the show, but I kind of looked down the set list and went, well, I, I don't know these songs and kind of did a bit of research thinking, well, is that is that really Blues Brothers? But then you kind of get onto a stage with that band yeah. and with the, the kind of spirit of the Blues Brothers, you know, kind of in the air and that's the context that he's done. You think, actually, yeah, that's 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 totally there you know it's uh, it's blues brothers but it just gives the show a different angle it gives it a, a, you know a different ingredient and i yeah. think that's the same same with the motown stuff it's still the blues blues brothers show but it's just got a little bit of a different ingredient which has been has been real fun actually I, you know as much as we can stretch the the band really uh, that, that's kind of you know really what i'm into just kind of i hate yeah. I'd, I'd hate to be doing this in, you know, two, five years, ten years, whatever, and still be playing the, the same set. Of course you so would, yeah. Just be, oh, my days, I can't even begin to, you know. So I love that idea of, you know, this show is the Motown mission, and then after the Motown mission, then I'm sure Chris is thinking about what's next, but I know it's going to be, it's going to have another fresh angle in it, which is going to kind of make you go, it reinvigorates the other, the old songs as well. You know, it kind of, you know, everybody and Soul Man and, and kind of JLS Rock, the ones that you've kind of got to play. Yeah. That just that new material just reinvigorates it and actually kind of go. You rediscover a little bit of a love. You know, you rediscover the love that you had for those songs. Mm-hmm. We've we've just started. I don't know whether it's a spoiler or whether anybody would be bothered, but we've moved Jailhouse Rock from the end of the second set to the start of the first set. And you think, well, uh, you know, you see it on paper, how's that going to work? But actually you play it and it's like, what a great opener to the second set. Why, why didn't we used to do this? You know? Right. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, um, it's, I, it's, I, it sounds like it's an unbelievable amount of fun. What's the most, what's the most fun song? What's your favorite at the moment? I know probably as a musician for me, it always changes, but as of the moment, what's yeah. the one you enjoy the most? I mean, it's, it's going to be horribly cliched, but I, I love soul, man. Yeah. You know, um, that, you know, the, that kind of opening line. That lick, I don't yeah. Know, yeah, I don't know if you remember, there was a film in the very early, eight, well, mid 80s called Soul Man, starring C. Thomas Howell. Right. I don't know if you ever saw it. Sounds familiar. It's slightly, you watch it nowadays and it's, I would say it's slightly questionable in its content. And I'm not actually sure what, what my parents were doing, allowing me to watch this film at that <laughs> age. Um, but it's called Soul Man and it starts with that lick. And, and I mean, literally that, that kind of stuck with me, just, just that, that intro just stuck with me th- throughout forever. You know, all the time I've been playing guitar and, you know, I mean, I love playing that line, and and it's great that you know it's two notes, and people know what you're playing straight away. That's brilliant. But yeah. but I love the um, the verse figure. There are so many little bits where it's quite other than the intro, which is obviously you know very guitar centric. 
kind of you get into the verses and stuff and the guitar sits right back but still the line is, is such a good line i just yeah. I, I i absolutely love playing that um i'm sure there are others in the set but i can't think of what the say is off the top no. I'm, I'm still relying on set lists so yeah. um, no that's a good ex- it's a great example though because you said it just sits in the background that little guitar lick and as you were I talking about it i could hear that little lick just happening off to the side you know in, in the yeah, background there. I, I just i just love i love you know that kind of what a great line but but it's kind of you normally kind of think oh that's a great line we need to put that up front that needs to be the thing but but actually throughout you know well with a lot of steve cropper's stuff there are good lines throughout and and it's almost like he's got so many good lines that you just go i'll tell you what you don't even really need to hear this one because I've got another great one that yeah. you're going to wear in three minutes, so don't, yeah. don't you worry about it, you know? Yeah, I think my favorite has always been Sweet Home Chicago. Yeah, what uh, a song. But I also love She Caught the Katie. Oh, I forgot about Katie, because we're not doing it on this one, but I love, i got to say, when um, Soul Man kind of predated me being involved in anything Blues Brothers, as I said, because, yeah. because of the movie. But kind of... Um, when I saw the ad, you know, way back in the day, when I saw the ad for the job and um, applied, went down for my audition and stuff, and you know, I learned what four songs or something for our, for the audition, um, and then kind of come back and get a phone call. Yeah, we'd like you to do it, and that's obviously the point where you start to go right. I best buy everything they've done now, so I can kind of load it all. Get, yeah, exactly. Yeah, who knows what we're going to be playing? But Katie's the one way. That just popped out straight away for me. I absolutely love playing it. In fact, Chris um, still sings it. Uh, you know, if he's just doing a mic, a mic check without without the band playing, yeah, he'll slip into a bit of Katie even now. It's just, oh, what a tune. What an absolute tune. Yeah. I'm glad you reminded me of that. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. I mean, it's, it's just one of those songs, man. And then you think that it's like a, it's it's John Belushi singing it, you know, and it's yeah, just like, sure. what, a, what a tune. It's not a it's not a song from a comedy film. It's an no, it's unbelievable just a song. song. Yeah, yeah, and and to be honest, I think you know from kind of back in the day doing it, you know, like you say, it's not a comedy song. And I actually think that in a live in 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 you know from for the for the purposes of of our show, it didn't always go as kind of didn't always go down as well as you kind of expect it to. And I'm sure that. This is not a, a criticism of the way that the band played it because, you know, I, I've i never had any complaints in that kind of sense. But I think when you're putting it up against something like um, Do You Love Me or Everybody or, you know, the, the kind of the the upbeat kind yeah. of you put it on, you can put it on at the end of a party and everybody's going to be drunk and having a great time with it. I think Katie's kind of it's a proper proper song. There's yeah. no there's no gimmick. There's no kind of you know oh it's a bit cheeky this song. It's just a really really good song. Yeah, with you an know, unbelievable and, and, vocal, like a smoking uh, vocal. Yeah, uh, I mean he was a good singer anyway. I, wanted, re, I mean really, yeah, he was a real good singer, a uh, real real good singer. But I love, I absolutely love it. Uh, I'm, I've actually pulled the set list out now, so I can tell you we're doing. Um, the Stevie Wonder medley. Ah, um, right. I think uh, Chris gave me a little, de- a little sneak peek of that too. Go ahead. Oh, really? Yeah, it's um, uptight and signed, sealed, delivered. Oh, it, I mean, we did it. Um, we we didn't bring it straight into the show. I think we did maybe one of the new shows um, and then brought it in the second gig uh, of this of this um, show. And we were just running it in sound check, just kind of making sure everything's, you know, everything's mm-hmm. where it needs to be. And I was just buzzing, just like it just sounded, the band was so good. It sounded so, so good. So I absolutely, obviously it's not um, a guitar led song or anything. It's just to kind of sit back and, you know, yeah. d- do do a proper rhythm guitar job, which 
he's totally cool. I'm I'm hundred percent cool with that. Yeah. But I learned a that. version of I learned a version of Sign Seal delivered for my gig and then forgot to play okay. it. It's one of those ones that oh, just kinda no. slipped my mind. I mean, like most songs that I do, the guitar becomes a very, very basic broken down guitar version and I just rely sure. on the vocals more. Um yeah, but right. I, I was really enjoying doing that one and as you were saying it I was like, Oh, I forgot to sing that one at the thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think though if you've got you know as you say you're a kind of singer songwriter and you know you're used to using your voice as as your kind of main way of communicating so i actually i totally see the whole kind of my voice is carrying this and the guitar is just accompanying the vocal right yeah. you know rather than necessarily a vocalist accompanying you know the guitarist is the the vocal is the main thing yeah. And you're filling in the bits that need filling with the guitar. I think that's awesome. I'm, yeah. I think that's really cool. I'm really into that. Well, don't get me wrong. In an ideal ideal situation, I would have Mr. J. Welsh from Canada or yourself standing beside me. <laughs> that's very kind. I do what I I do what I have to do because I know I can. I, I enjoy the singing and, and the guitar is uh-huh. just kind of there because it because it unfortunately has to be. Uh, no, yeah. you know. I mean, I can I can hold my own. I'm not saying it's terrible, but you know what I mean. I'm, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I'm no so Mac guitar you- Murphy. Yeah, who is the? Um, are you? Uh, so you originally a piano player then? Uh, only like because as a kid I had the little keyboards and that was the first time I ever learned to like structure music and copy songs sure. and realize that the songs I loved all fit onto this little keyboard thing. Yeah, right. Uh, but it's hard. It was hard to write songs on piano for me. Um, mm-hmm. And then the guitar kind of. I had friends who played guitar and then got them to show me some really basic chords. Yeah, right. And then it was just easier to write songs on the guitar. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's certainly, you know, if your intention is to play in a band as well, then I think, you know, the guitar seems to, I think if you have a piano in a band, chances are the piano is going to be the dominant thing. Yeah. You know, it's kind of, whereas a guitar can, it can sit back, it doesn't need to be the dominant thing, or it can kind of, you know, it can kind of be the dominant thing in a song. So, I, you know, I, I love piano. I, I I played the worst piano in the world, and and all the all the chords that I know are all weird inversions because I learned them all from playing. You know, I just would write down what the notes were in the guitar chord right. before I knew before I knew anything about how to, you know, the formula for chords or or anything like that. So like, let me th- okay. So my um, a an a that I play on a piano. Well, no, let's say a d that will play on a piano. I would do an ADF sharp. That would be my normal D, but obviously that's not right. That's not the first inversion. But because I transferred it directly over from, you know, the strings that were kind of on the guitar, or the way that that I was playing a D chord at that moment. Yeah. Um. So, um. But but I love. It's the most complete instrument. Um. And I wish that I did play piano prop well with any level of competency yeah i'm the same as you i always say i wish my parents would have forced me into piano lessons as a kid yeah right i it's wish funny, they would have dragged just, me kicking and screaming to it yeah my boy actually just started um two weeks ago piano lessons so um i'm crack i'm cracking the whip i'm getting to be you know a practice practice yeah well he's gonna appreciate it one day and we both know that well hopefully yeah hopefully he may, he you may not be his favorite guy for the next little while <laughs> Yeah, right. Well, you know, that's I think that's just part of that's part of the job brief, isn't it? Unfortunately, and sometimes you gotta be the unpopular guy. Yeah, tough love but, as they call it, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. But as, as I said to you in the um, you know, when we were messaging, you know, after that he, my boy came uh, my boy and my wife actually came to Cardiff uh, to see the show. And that's the first time it's not the first time he's ever seen me play, but it's the first time he's seen me in a in in that kind of environment, you know, yeah. kind of be- bells and whistles and stuff. Yeah. And yeah, for, for a good solid twenty minutes after the gig, I was popular. Nice. I was I was I was I was borderline cool for twenty minutes. Whoa. <laughs> um, it worn off by the next morning, so things were back to normal. But it was a nice ride while it lasted. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. How old I is was he? milking it? He's eight now. Eight. So that's eight. that's. For you to be as here over twenty minutes as an eight-year-old, that's huge, right? Because <laughs> you got a lot of competition for eight-year-olds. I mean, I'm not saying it's a big deal, but I've got it tattooed on me just so I don't remember. I'm obviously joking. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't blame you if you did, though. Yeah, right. <clears throat> Dude, this is uh, this has been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, thank you very much. I, I would really lo- enjoyed myself. I would love to do this again sometime. Yeah, for sure, man. Anytime you like at all. Uh, Anytime cause, you like. Because that's the thing about musicians—we can just sit and talk about a lot of music and just just chat about it. 
you know, I, I so very infrequently, you know, my, um, you know, social circle really I, is, is basically no musicians. Obviously, like you occasionally go out for, you know, a beer or something with a musician friend and obviously from gigs and stuff, I'm spending all my time with musicians. But in my normal Personal marriage, life, yeah. Yeah, exactly. My normal life. I don't actually, you know, the the closest I get is boring my wife, occasionally going, hey, you must listen to this. I'll be quiet, John. Yeah. Please leave it. Yeah, because you're you know, at so home, you're just John. Absolutely, yeah. So it's been really lovely to actually sit and talk about guitar and, be, and talk about music. So thanks very much for that. Next time on Matt Lee's Gets Creative. First and foremost, you know, I'm uh, I'm here. I'm, I grew up and I'm here from Chicago. Uh, I come from a family... Yeah, a uh, family of uh, 15 children. I got nine sisters. You got nine and, sisters. Yeah, and I got, uh, uh, I'm, I'm the sixth boy, so there's six boys. Wow. So that's 15, yeah. You're poor, uh, you're poor parents, man. <laughs> no, it's cool. Yeah. But, um, we, we all, we all a bit uh, drew, everybody drew a little bit is what I'm told in some kind of way, and uh it just uh, clicked easier for me, if I could say it like that, where I could look, I, I was looking at pictures and I could copy without tracing. And this is four years old. From the Chicago Blues Brothers to the legit streets of Chicago, Illinois next episode, as I'm talking to Alejandro Rosado, AKA Alero Art. Alero Art is a teacher, a cartoonist, a mentor, and now a fellow podcaster. Check out the Alero Art Podcast, and he's my guest next time on Matt Lee's Gets Creative. Thanks for listening.